we design an identity, uh, such as here's a few that we've done. Uh, many of them are, have been used like 30 years and still working, so I often say that some folks think design just falls out of the air, but, but uh, we get seriously, seriously involved in it. We'll have all sorts of research. We'll get to know the company. We will hold interviews, and because without this kind of understanding, there's really no way in my mind that a designer can design an identity that's unique, it's memorable, it's timeless, it's a gestalt, that's the saying that it says more than the sums might indicate. In designing a, an identity, we'll go through thousands of sketches. When we did the Presbyterian identity, uh, they stopped counting at 5,000 sketches before you get to the real image. And I will start out when we're designing identity by working by pen and ink or uh, something like this, but drawing it, and in a way you could say it's, it's rough. Then it will go down and, and somebody will, one of the people who works here will work on it with the computer, get it cleaned up, then it may come back to me and I make some changes or I may go down and sit in front of the computer with somebody. But here is where I am now. Uh, because that imaginary M that you have here, like it's really not there, but I'm excited about the fact that you almost see that, but it's not there. Well, I've always had a fantastic crew here. When I talk about me doing something, that's really we doing something because we're almost all of us involved in each project. It keeps going back and forth and then we will all meet and talk about it. I was born in Mill Springs, Kentucky, and I was 12 years old before I saw an electric light or heard a radio. But it was a really wonderful thing for me because it seems to me that I learned to appreciate things that I might not have felt that way otherwise. I was always traveling through nature and my parents were growing most of the food that we ate and all those sorts of things. I had a wonderful, wonderful teacher in high school, Mildred Ellis, and she would let me draw my reports instead of writing them and she was my English teacher. She would tell my parents that he couldn't do well. I was doing signs in high school. Uh, then when the Korean War came up, I remember I was up painting a sign on the ice plant and three of my friends came down and said, get down, we're going to go join the Navy. And I said, well, I have to finish this sign. Then I went in the Navy for four years. And in the Navy, I was an aviation metalsmith. I was really good at welding aluminum. Not many people were. Matter of fact, when I was in the Navy, I was let out several times to, uh, to teach civil service how to weld aluminum. One thing I want to, want to mention also, because this helped me decide to go into graphic design, is that before I'd gone in the Navy, I had seen posters and billboards that uh, talked about, this was like at the end of World War II, and talking about the Japs and had the big teeth and all this sort of thing on billboards. And then I ended up in the Navy and I was on a carrier uh, for over a year. Japan was their home port. Well, when we first got there, I refused to go off on liberty. I didn't want to go off. But then when I decided to go off, I found them to be the most honorable people. Anyway, that helped me start to think about this is maybe I'm too over analytical, but help me decide uh, probably that I want to go into graphic design, purposeful communication. Came back and uh, I applied for the Art Academy of Cincinnati. I had incredible teachers and Joseph Albers had been there just a year or so before and it was influenced by Albers. 
teaching, and then I had a wonderful teacher, Noel Martin. I found out the only way I got into the academy was because I knew how to weld, because a company had given the academy a whole metal shop. And so one of my first jobs was to teach somebody how to weld. And while I was at the academy, one year I produced five pieces of sculpture, and they had the Ohio Sculpture Show, five pieces sold in the total show, and three of them were mine. It paid for my first son, Joel, to be born selling that sculpture. When I graduated from the academy, they thought I was graduating as a sculptor. I knew I was graduating as a graphic designer. I started teaching at the Art Center at the University of Louisville. I was there two years, and uh, I got an offer to come to Rhode Island School of Design and teach. I've always considered myself a designer who happened to be teaching rather than a teacher who happened to be designing. So that was 1960. So I promised my prairie flower Clarice, my wife, that we'd only, in 1960, we'd only be here one year. Uh, nine grandchildren later, we're still here. <laughs> We were asked to do, design the identity for health and human services. Well, your federal organizations at that time, each one of them had to have a seal, and the seal had to include an eagle. We decided we would put the eagle in the symbol, but simplify it. We drew the image, Jimmy Carter unveiled it, and he said, oh, it's the wings of the eagle sheltering the people. So I've been saying that ever since. We've had some incredible jobs all over the world. But one thing I like about what we do here, we work for some of the largest organizations in the country. But at the same time, we're working for some of the smallest. And that makes it really special. And one of them is not any more important to me than the other. Well, I couldn't hand it to you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 <laughs>